Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Those of you who know me will know that I'm Emily Price. I'm the chairman of the Doreen Valiente Foundation. And it's my great pleasure this afternoon to produce another one of our podcasts on what people knew about Doreen, how they came to meet her, her influence on their lives, and so on. I'm very pleased to introduce to you all today, gentleman Kim Payne, who some of you may well know. Um, and I'll get Kim to introduce himself. Okay, Kim, tell us about yourself. Hi, I'm Kim. I'm 65 years old now. <laughs> yeah, never thought I'd get to this age. <laughs> um, I've been a pagan virtually all my life. Before I knew I was a pagan, uh, I, was always, I was always out in the woods, out on the moors, etc. So, and I drifted into paganism really naturally. It became a natural thing for me. Mm -hmm. and moved around the country. I eventually ended up in Brighton, where, of course, I met Doreen. Now, how can I put this? A nicer little old lady you would never wish to meet. <laughs> I met her in a bookshop, and we were both going through the books, and I happened to find one, and went, oh, and she went, oh, and, and, and I went, oh, you, you want... I said, no, but I, I like the book. And we got talking. And that was my first introduction to Doreen. Literally over a book in a bookshop in Brighton. <laughs> <laughs> and and I, I didn't know who she was then. Um, obviously, I had read her books, but it didn't click. The, the photograph at the back didn't represent what I was seeing. So anyway, by the by, time goes on and I frequent the same sort of bookshops and a couple of times I'd run into her and we'd have a little natter, like you do, a little conversation. Nothing in depth, nothing, to, but I actually felt like she was sounding me out to see what I knew or what I was doing. Anyway, good and long story short, after a few of these times, she invited me back for tea cup of tea okay and i always remember that was the first time i met hob <laughs> yeah and for those who know <laughs> hob can be very um mm, what's this <laughs> shall we say for those that don't know hob was a guardian who would uh, look after the flat when she wasn't there and <laughs> yeah I got on quite well with him. At least I hope I did. At least I felt I did. And I went back for a cup of tea. And we got to talking and we talked about all sorts of things. But I always remember one thing that she said to me and that has stood with me ever since I first met her. And that was this. You'll know more by going out onto the moors on a full moon at midnight and listening to the wind in the trees than you will by going to any guru. And that's what she means to me. Freedom to be who you are and do it your way. And she often said to me, you know, Kim, I do believe that you're solitary, but you're doing it the right way. You're doing what means to you, what it means to you, find the meaning. And that's another thing she then said to me was find the true meaning behind it. Whatever is there is in you, bring it out. That's all this paraphernalia, um, and I am paraphrasing here, that's all that this paraphernalia is for, is to bring it out of you because it's already in there. It's innate in you. It's innate in everybody. You've just got to bring it out. And the only way you'll do it is by connecting to the ancestral ways. And anybody can do it. Anybody can do it. You don't need a guru. You don't need books. Just go out into the woods and listen on a dark night with no light. Listen to the rustle of the trees. Listen to the animals in the undergrowth. And you will find that how can I put this, that wonder that she had about everything. 
because she had this wonderful imagination that when you saw her, when you walked with her, or even if you just had a conversation in a bookshop in Brighton, things would stick in your mind. And she's always been my guiding light in that way. Everything that I've ever done, I've many, many times used the same analogies that she used for me when I've been talking to other people. And I, I remember one conversation that we had one day and it was about initiations. And we were talking about, you know, what, what we thought about, you know, the, that you can't be a real witch un, unless you're initiated by A, B and C. And she turned around to me and I always remember these words were, who initiated the first witch? And that's what she said to me. Who in the, and and I, it, it floored me. It absolutely floored me because I'd never thought about it. And I said, and I, I just looked at it and I went, <laughs> literally <laughs> like that. I was speechless. And then I turned, and then it, so it clicked in my head and I said, yeah, now I understand what you mean about connecting with the deeper meanings and the things that's inside you and bringing it all out. You don't need to be initiated. You don't need all the paraphernalia. You just need to look and bring it out. Get the wonder, get the emotions. Go onto the moors at night and listen to the rain. Feel it on your skin. Then you'll know the element of water. Many, many times. Um, I met her in a bookshop or, or sometimes uh, sort of uh, in the, um, not the craft shops, the uh, charity shops that I used to see her sometimes. So my relationship with her was not formal. It wasn't a coven-esque type of relationship where we would go into the wood, you know, with the rest of the coven. Mine was a an acquaintance thing, really. I would see her in a bookshop. We'd have a cup of tea. I would see her in uh, a charity shop. And she'd maybe just pick something up. And, um, you know, that type of thing. So, all in all, if people were to ask me to say one thing about Doreen and what she means to me is this. A guiding light. Follow it wherever it leads, and it'll never steer you wrong. So, I hope that's enough. <laughs> that's, um, that's, that's brilliant, Kim. Thank you very uh, much. She obviously made quite an impact on you. Oh, yes, she did. Mm -hmm. uh, because I never thought about half the things that she would say to me in that way. And that's why I always, even now, so many years after her death, even when I'm talking to people and sort of maybe trying to even help guide them, I still remember what she said to me. The words, I can hear them echoing in the back of my mind. And I can still hear her laugh, her giggle. <laughs> yeah. One sort of interesting fact is that at one time I lived in Bletchley Park um, and oh. she was apparently there during the war, I do believe. But I'm not sure about that because mm. there's a lot of her past is shrouded in mystery. So <laughs> it is. But yeah, yeah, a guiding light. That is exactly what she means to me. Yeah. Follow it and see where it leads. And she was like that with everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, she didn't like gurus. Oh, and <laughs> another thing, she loved football. And if the World Cup was on, that was it. You wouldn't nothing, go nowhere near her, nothing. <laughs> football, that's it. Too close, lot. You could, you could hammer on it till the cows come home. <laughs> he would never answer it. Never when the football was on. 
<laughs> I always remember that one as well. Uh, dear. But yeah, a very unassuming, very humble lady who, if you didn't know who she was, you could walk past her in the street and wouldn't even recognise her. And I'm sure a lot of people have and didn't realise that she was the mother of modern witchcraft. She was the instigator. And lots of people now think that half the stuff that she wrote is, is like canon and it's old. It's not. It was written in the 50s and 60s. You know, The Charge of the Goddess, for instance. They think it's old and it's not. But there again, is it? Or is that just her bringing it into the modern era? And it is actually old. That's what I've always thought anyway. I was thought that she's had this connection to the craft, which ran so deep that when she connected, she connected to the old ways and she brought it forward so that anybody that would like to follow the old ways, would like to follow the old religion, would like to be their true selves, could be able to just by reading between the lines. Going and listening to the wind, sitting on the beach with a fire, and watching the moon rise over the water. These are the magical times. These are the magical places. And she was always saying to me that when we met, those were the really important things for her, were the magical times. But for her, the magical times never stopped. It wasn't something she did on a Saturday night with her mates, you know, down the local pub. It was something she was, something she is, something that was so ingrained in her that there was no Mrs. or Miss Valiente and Doreen Valiente the Witch. It was just there all the time. And she lived it. She had her books. <laughs> virtually floor to ceiling a lot of the time on the on the <laughs> on the stacks and well what is it about about two 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 thousand plus books that was they were all over the place i think um she said to me the yeah, there's about a couple of thousand here uh i don't know they were so they were all over the place but there again she was always a great believer in you, you don't buy something. You actually um, make it for yourself. Although she had no no qualms with with finding something, you know, in a, in a charity shop or whatever, and using that. But she was always a firm believer that if you needed something, make it. You know, it's more personal to you if you make it. And that's another thing about her craft. It's personal to her. And she taught that lesson very well. That craft is personal and nobody has the right craft. Everybody's is the right craft for them. And yeah. Bless her. So she's with the goddess now. Probably sitting around the fire somewhere, talking. At least that's how I like to think of her. Raising a glass of wine. Yes. <laughs> With well, Gerald and Alex and all the rest of them. You know, yeah. probably having a looking down at us and laughing. <laughs> Quite possibly. <laughs> okay, Kim, that is brilliant. Thank you very much indeed for that. That's not a problem. Ladies and gentlemen, You've just been listening to Kim Payne on what Doreen Valiente meant to him.